And now we want to go to the... Nope, I want to talk about Nebula. Nebula, all right. What's, what, what about Nebula, Mike? Okay, Tap. you know what? They put in, uh, you know, a fairly popular actress into the role of Nebula. I mean, uh, Karen Gillian is, like, growing in popularity from her Doctor Who fandom. And, uh, you know, that character had a lot of room to grow. And I thought that, um, although she didn't die and will most likely be back, um, they could have done a lot more with her. Um, they really should have played up that whole... Like, I guess the same with Gamora is they didn't really show that, like, femme fatale. Like, these are, like, seasoned killers, assassins. Like, these are some of the most deadliest people in the universe, and you still don't get that vibe. And I really thought that, um, although, like, the way that she was done up, the makeup and, like, the special effects when she gets blown up by that rocket and her, like, body is, like, crumpling back together, really cool stuff. But at the same time, like, for as I said, for the most of the villains, very poor character development, very poor... Um, writing on their part, I believe. Yeah, I want to jump in and say, for first of all, I am totally head over heels in love with Karen Gillan and have been ever since the first, like, two seconds of Series 5 of Doctor Who. But anyway, <laughs> I think... I saw somebody earlier today complaining about her in that in the role of Nebula, and I thought it wasn't really her fault. I don't think. I mean, despite the fact that I, I don't like it when people from Scotland have to fake American accents, but uh, the, I thought that her writing, like you said, was not solid. The writing for her character was mostly just yelling at people and telling them to get out of her way, and that was not, that wasn't character building per se, other than saying that she's very angry, but she didn't have enough interaction with characters like like Ronan or Thanos or Gamora even, even though they had some interaction. There wasn't enough to really establish who she is, what she's about, other than that she's pretty grumpy a lot. Yeah, I mean, for the tension that was going on between the two of them, the end fight was kind of pitiful. Um, you mm -hmm. figured there would have been more like emotion put into that fight, but there wasn't. And, I mean... I, like, I don't blame the actors at all. They're all really, really good actors and actresses. But they, like, the scene where they're visiting Thanos and she is acting like a teenager. Like, thanks, Dad. It was really, really sad. Like, this is, like, one of the most hardened female assassins in space. And she's acting like a teenage girl to her daddy. Like... Uh, did, didn't play right. I, I agree, actually. And it would have depended on when in their sort of, like, character life they would have sort of portrayed them, if they had actually portrayed them as younger. They've been, you know, raised by Thanos since they were young. Um, so maybe it would have been more appropriate if they actually were teenagers and had that sort of uh, approach. But, you know, obviously Zoe Saldana and Karen Gillan are, are in their 30s. And so, you know, it seems, it seems like they they got off a little light. So... Uh, I would like to see more character development specifically on Gamora because I don't think actually um, Nebula is actually going to have a whole lot more left to do in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but, Nebu uh, but um, Gamora will. Gamora is going to have a very strong role, and uh, I think that more character development there would be fantastic and welcomed by all. Um, okay, um, so what about... Um, what else? What do we want to talk about? Ronan? What, uh, we talked about him. Uh, talked about Celestials. What else? Howard the Duck. Oh my goodness. How could I forget? Can someone explain? I mean, I know who the character is, but I don't know, you know, why is he relevant? Why was he in this movie versus someone else? He's not relevant. He's not important to the movie. He is just, like, when you... Go back to, like, the 1980s, I would say, comic books. Um, like, that's the kind of inclusion in a comic book I would see, where just, like, off-cue, Howard the Duck shows up, says a one-liner, and it's, like, at the end of the book, and you're just like, okay, that's fine. Like, mm -hmm. I, uh, Tales of Suspense, when I would read it when I was younger, it would just be like, you know just this random one-off, and it just it played very well, I thought, for 
Um, not having a stinger that's spoiling to something else, but just having a stinger that just, you know... For fun. Yeah, makes sense. It was awesome. It was in keeping with the the tone of the movie where it was just like, this this is, this is doesn't matter. Look, Howard the Duck. <laughs> and we're all like, ha, ah, yes, you're right. I think the equivalent in the DC side would be a stinger at the end of... Uh, yeah, it's so a stinger at the end of uh, Man of Steel where he would show up, Mr. Mitzvah, and says something completely random. A lot of people wouldn't know who the hell it was, but the, the diehards would just be like, oh my god, look what you just did. You just put him in there, and that's just fantastic. The real diehards would have had ambush bug. That's yeah. for... <laughs> that's for Billy, just saying, ambush bug. So there was actually a couple. So um, a couple things. So obviously Cosmo the dog, uh, you notice there now, he uh, in Marvel Universe actually gets uh, telepathy uh, and actually becomes the head of security for Nowhere um, uh, at some point. So he's a, a bit of a sort of a, an homage as well. But Howard the Duck had uh, an unfortunate run in with, um, uh, a, we'll call it a movie, we'll, we'll call it a movie, uh, in the early 80s with, um, uh, I forget her name right now, but anyway, the movie was universally panned as as horrible, and actually I think George Lucas, ironically, if I'm not mistaken, was the executive producer on that, so I'm not sure how that happened, but um, there was parts of it that were good, um, uh, uh, what are those called, the credits, um, but <laughs> no, it's actually a, a bit of a cult film, um, and it would be interesting, and there's a lot of talk about it becoming... Uh, one of the next, or Sage 3 or Phase 3 uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Um, did you guys catch who did the voice? And I recognized the voice almost instantly, and I had to double check it. Did you guys recognize Seth, who, who Seth did Green. It? Yeah, it was Seth Green. Yeah. Was um, it, it wasn't something that I caught initially, but it was, uh, um, it was recognizable when I went back and thought about it, because there was something about the voice that I recognized, but yeah. Do you think Maybe they used Howard the Duck like at the end, just just as like a, just in case this movie is terrible, here's a reference to another terrible movie that we did. So on the uh, guest voice actor side, did anybody else hear the other guest voice actor? It was the I caught it like almost instantly when it happened in the movie, but um, when I was Nathan talking Fillion. to my wife, yeah, Nathan Fillion, she was like, "Who are you talking about?" And I was like, "I'm pretty sure it was this character, like the large." Um, inmate that group ends up sticking his fingers up his nose, but like that, I was like, I'm pretty sure that's it right there because it's, I knew that he was going to be in it. And I was trying to figure out in what capacity. I was really hoping that they were going to have Mal actually show up in there somewhere. I don't know how they would have done that or how they would have got the rights to it from Fox, but whatever. Um, but that was, you know, it's really cool to see like all these people that really want in. To these Marvel movies. I mean, like, Vin Diesel was Groot. Like, when I told Gwen that, she, like, her mind exploded, because she's like, why would he do that? Why would they pay someone to do that? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure he walked into Marvel and said, I want a role somewhere in a movie. Give me anything you've got. Yeah, actually, Rob Zombie was the voice of one of the Ravager Navigators, apparently, as well. Um, yeah, there was quite, quite a few uh, interesting little nods in there. I don't know. I loved it. That was, it was good. Fantastic. It was great. And, you know, the, like, okay, so now we got to talk about it because it was, like, Kevin Bacon. <laughs> like, yeah. how, like, how do you fit Kevin, just Kevin Bacon as a reference into a movie and still be wonderful? Like, yeah. The, the fact that the, and we'll tie this into the music in a second here, Rab, but the fact that the, like, you know, 70s, uh, 60s, uh, well, I, I don't know, 70s and 80s kind of just, like, are, like, pulled right into this movie through soundtracks or through references because Peter has no reference to Earth culture past the time that he was, like, kidnapped. And so it's, like, yeah, it was really good. I love the way that they tied the soundtrack in, um, that they actually, it was a tape playing either in his, like, Walkman or, like, on that old uh, cassette player. Yeah, I was thinking, uh, like, when you see the preview, you see that they, they do that, like, with, uh, what's that song? Hooked on a Feeling. And if you got the impression from the preview that this would be a movie where people fight to pop songs from the 70s and 80s, you were correct. And you were <laughs> perhaps, 
your expectations were perhaps exceeded in that respect because it's pretty much every every other scene has a uh, pop song in it, not necessarily fighting to it, but there's some... I think it worked really well, too, the way that it sort of uh, grounds the movie, and it's it's like the common thread throughout the whole movie, and then it pays off in the end when his mom, like when the present ends up being another one, so or, or another mixtape, and uh, I thought that was really good. And I have to say, yeah. it made for like the it it made for the best um, introduction, like um, title sequence to a movie, like ever. Like I don't think that there's any intro or title sequence for a movie that it will ever compare to that again because that was just like him dancing through the ruins listening to and I can't remember what song it was but like just it was awesome like it, and the, like really the title did. sequence pops up above him and I was thinking when it started uh you get the the Marvel like the Marvel logo which is accompanied by this like this soundtrack which I think started with the Avengers and I thought that this was like just the soundtrack they use for I, I mean I thought they were reusing the Marvel or the Avengers score and then it turns out that that's just the theme song for the Marvel thing and then I was like so is there a theme song for this movie that seems weird for a superhero movie that there's no theme song and no title card and then like 10 minutes into the movie just as it's like He's stepping out all serious like Raiders of the Lost Ark. And then all of a sudden he's just like, tape. And then he's dancing. And then it's like, Guardians of the Galaxy. This is the movie you're watching. Whatever you thought it was, it's this now. <laughs> and and that, that really helped get me into the movie like right away. I was like, oh, yeah, this isn't even what I thought. This is better than what I thought. This is, this is an experience now. So now we have two instances of superheroes dancing in a movie, and one works and the other does not. <laughs> Spider-Man, you didn't pull it off. That's true. That's uh, they can't all be winners. They can't all be dancers. We need to do an episode just on Spider-Man 3 so that we can go over the pains. The pain. We can just rip through it. Like a therapy. I saw it twice. I saw it twice. Wow. In the theaters, and I don't know why. Anyway, that's not here or there. That's another thing entirely. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll leave it at that. Um, anything anyone else wants to cover, and then otherwise we're signing off? I'm good. All right. All right, folks, have a great one. <laughs>